Lasers are extremely useful tools. They're often used to make signs and decorative elements kind of like this. But lasers can also be used to make pretty practical objects that you can use in the shop and around the house and help with organization. And I'm specifically talking about boxes. Now over the years I've made all sorts of boxes with lasers. I've made open top boxes, split top and bottom boxes like this. And I've also been commissioned to make slide top boxes as a wedding keepsake, kind of like this. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the creation of a box. And I'm simply gonna do a type of what I call a split box where you have a separate top and bottom. I'm gonna show you the software that I use and how I generate those patterns. And we're gonna cut that out on my Atom Stack Hurricane. Now this is not a sponsored video. They did provide me the laser, but I already did a review for them in a previous video. I'm simply going to use this laser to demonstrate the project and show how quickly and easily you could cut out a pattern to put together into a box with this machine. So let's go ahead and get started. The site that I use to design a lot of my boxes is makercase.com. More specifically, en.makercase.com. I'll have a link to it down in the description below. And you have an option to choose between several different box types, box of dividers, round corners, polygonal boxes, but I'm just gonna do a simple box for right now. Once again, this is a free site, and this is a really popular site amongst a lot of makers for setting up and designing boxes. You can set up and design a box in most vector drawing programs for the laser, but I like using this because of the features that are kind of built in here to help simplify the process. So in the site, you get a 3D view of the box that you're designing, which is kind of cool. Just a left mouse button click, and you can rotate it around and see it. Now, this is not the kind of box that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my options over here on the left-hand side. Now, you can choose between inch and millimeters, depending on what your application is and what your needs are. And you can go ahead and put in your width, height, and depth. And that's going to be about right on those dimensions. And I can always go back here and adjust these later on if I need. That's, those are my rough dimensions that I know for right now. You also have an option to have it inside or outside dimension. Now what that means is that an outside dimension is going to take into account the width of your wood stock. And the inside dimension is only going to be the inner dimension of the box itself. And I typically like to do the inner because I'm building this to hold something very specific that has a very specific uh, dimension, such as uh, baseball cards. You can also enter in a custom thickness. I'm going to be using a 1 8 inch board for this, but you can also choose 1 4 3 8 and 1 half. Those are the standards that are most widely used. But you can also put in a custom thickness here. I highly advise that you use a pair of calipers and figure out what is the actual dimensional thickness of your stock. It is not always exactly 1 8 inch. The more accurate measurements are, the better your joints will be in the long run. I'm okay with the 1 8 inch for right now. And I'm also going to have an open box, not a closed box. That gives me a better view of the inside as well. But if you want to design a box that has a lid designed to go with it, you can. And last, we need to choose our edge joint type. You have three different choices. You have flat, finger, and T-slot. T-slot looks a little bit interesting here, which I've not used. Flat is just what we also call a butt joint sometimes. Just make sure that you pay attention to the orientation of these end caps that go on the end here, because it's being designed with that dimension of mind. But I'm going to be using a finger joint that makes it go together kind of like a puzzle. I think I'm going to add a little bit more. I think I'm going to add a few more fingers in there for a little bit more stability. And that looks about good to me. Now the nice thing is that this is all being auto-generated, so I don't have to worry about any additional measurements. All my parameters here are generating those pieces, and I'm pretty much ready to download the box plans. So I can download those plans. If you want to leave those labeled, if you have a lot of pieces for some reason and you're not really sure how they're going to go together, that could be very useful for you in the long run. I don't necessarily want those. And you have a couple options here if it applies to your project. So line formatting, 
curve and corner compensation, especially if you're using a router where you need an additional clearance there. And then you can download as a DXF or a SVG. And I'm going to go ahead and download as my SVG, which I've already done. Now from there, it's ready to bring into whatever program you're using for your laser. At this point, I can just bring this into Lightburn and it should be ready to go. But I already have the file queued up. I'm gonna make one additional adjustment to mine. So I'm going to go into a different program really quick, which is my vector drawing program. I use Illustrator for all of my vectors. If you don't have access to Illustrator, you can also use something like Inkscape, which is really good for drawing vectors and it's free. I have access to Illustrator through my job, so this is what I'm comfortable using and it's what I have been using for quite a while. I've already brought in my SVG and I've also brought in some additional graphics for the box that I want. So that's going to be my top, those are going to be my ends, and this is going to be the top of the box. I will need a second one generated for the bottom that I'm doing. I can save this as an Illustrator file and Lightburn supports Illustrator files. So I can bring this right into Lightburn and start cutting, which is what I will do right now. We just have to turn on the laser and start running the file. Now that all of our pieces are cut out, we're ready to put the box together. And it goes together pretty easily, kind of like a puzzle. Now you can use a couple different adhesives to put this together. I'm gonna to be using E6000 because I'm out of CA glue and I don't have access to my wood glue right now. E6000 will hold really well, but it does have a longer set time. So you might need some small clamps to hold things together while this dries and sets. And this could be a little bit messy, so it may not be the best option for most people. I actually recommend using wood glue. You can use CA glue, but CA glue can tend to be brittle at times. So if you use CA glue and you drop the box, there's a good chance that those joints in that box is going to break. The wood won't break, but the joints will kind of come apart. So I'm gonna use this stuff right now. I'll try to be as clean as possible putting it together. And it's going to take a couple minutes. Let me show you how it goes together. A6000 is a pretty universal adhesive, but like I said, it is a little bit messy and it takes a little bit of practice to get used to using it there. Before I start assembling this, before I start assembling this, I wanna show kind of a quick tip. So if your material is a little bit rough, not rough to the point where you see splinters, but just a little bit rough to the touch, you can use a light sandpaper to go over it and smooth it out. But what I like to do sometimes, especially with the thinner stock, is I use a, I use a razor blade and I will go with the grain and just kind of give it a little bit of a shape. Just a couple passes will make it a little bit smoother to the touch and a little bit presentable for taking finish after the fact. And if you're doing this for a client, you can even scrape some of the little bit of burning off. Make sure to do this in an area where you don't mind dust getting around because that will create some fine dust on the surface there. So I'm gonna put some glue on the joints. It doesn't need glue everywhere, just on the parts that are gonna make contact with the opposite piece. And then you should be able to press them together. The bottom here has a pretty good tight fit, which will be good. And now I can do the opposite side. Or I'll do one of the long sides to Keep a little more stability. If I was doing this for a client, 
I would probably work a little bit cleaner here and on a little bit of a different surface. In certain weather and humidity, certain pieces can start bending a little bit. So it might be useful to have a little clamp, which I'll probably have these clamped up once I have this completely glued up. And that should kind of hold it in to a flat position. And there it is. I got one side together and I just have to do the other side. I have the top and bottom both glued up. I have the bottom one clamped. I need to get some small clamps for the top to hold it just a little bit. I got a little bit messy with the glue, so I'm gonna clean it up with a razor blade a little bit after they're done gluing up, and then they'll be ready for finish and to put some cards in there. And now the finish is dry, we have a nice functional box that I can use to keep my collectible cards in. You can use as a keepsake, you could sell these as a product. Just make sure that you have the right to whatever logo or image that you use on here. This is the Tops logo. I do not have the right to sell this. I just did this as a personal project for the video and for my cards. So make sure you have the rights to any graphics that you might use in your projects. And all that with the Atom Stack Hurricane the cut out in a pretty short period of time along with using Maker Case which is the software online that I use to design and generate the cut pattern. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd like to say thank you. It means a lot that you've watched up until this point. I have a lot of other videos in the back catalog you might enjoy. And I have some new videos coming up, some laser related and some not that I hope that you are looking forward to as well. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash geekbuilders. We have a good growing group online and I have a lot of files that are available for you. If you are a paid member, you get all those files for free, but you can also join as a free member and see what else is going on in the community. If you'd like to get a hurricane for yourself, I have an affiliate link down below. If you use that link to purchase something from Amistack, there's a good chance I will get a commission from that. So thank you in advance if you choose to do so. That's it for me. I'll see you in the next video. I'll have links to everything that's relevant down below. Take care. Don't forget to design, make, and play.